After carrying Stanford to a Pac-12 championship and becoming the first Chinese QB to win the Heisman, I was faced with my biggest life decision. Although I'm projected as the Heisman favorite for the upcoming year and am mocked as a first round caliber QB, my Asian mother still doesn't believe in the football dream as she wants me to work a stable job at the Big Five, also known as Fang. My grades saw a huge decline last year as I devoted so much time into improving my game, which led me to believe that there were only two paths. Either I commit to football or I forfeit my NFL dreams and focus on academics. Even though I was projected to be the Heisman winner, Stanford entered the preseason polls at number 42 as all of my receivers and defensive stars left for the NFL. If I stayed at Stanford, we were likely going to go backwards as that would mean I focus more on my degree and eventually give up on my dreams. But I know I have the talent and have what it takes to be a starting QB in the NFL. So without telling my family, I have decided to enter the transfer portal to seek out more options. A lot of schools showed interest as it is extremely rare for a Heisman winner to transfer the following year. However, my list was narrowed down to seven schools. Michigan State State, Penn State, Florida, West Virginia, Ohio State, Clemson, and Alabama. My main priority was to play with a contending roster, but I also wanted to go back out to the East. These seven schools also presented me with NIL offers worth hefty amounts. I wanted to start profiting off my own name, so the deals were really attractive. And after secretly visiting all seven schools over the offseason, I had made my choice. I have decided to transfer to the University of Florida, becoming a Gator. Anthony Richardson headed off to the draft, and Jalen Kitna arrested and dismissed from the team. A vacant QB spot was open on the roster. They have one of the best receivers in college football, Zay Xavier Henderson, three fantastic tight ends, and one of the best secondaries in the nation. And with an offensive-minded head coach and Billy Napier, you are looking to become a powerhouse in the SEC. However, this decision did not sit well with my family. My mom found out my decision through the news as I was too afraid to let her down in person. I know she is incredibly disappointed in me, but this is a decision that I hope and pray will make sense to her in the long run. Ranked as the number 12 team in the preseason polls, we were ready to start our road to the playoff with our first game against Coastal Carolina, and the Swamp is active. They haven't seen a Heisman QB since Tim Tebow as we start out with a play action pass on third and short. I scramble out the right side and show the fans my running ability, bringing them shades of Tebow. And we end the drive off with our first touchdown as a Gator to Henderson. This could be the start of the best college QB wide receiver duo. But one of the main reasons I transferred to Florida was the system. The fit and the scheme reminded me of when I played in high school as Coach Napier calls a QB blast up the middle for my second touchdown. Which is a play call I haven't heard since my high school days at Clarksville. First and goal coach calls another option run but this time we pitch it out to our running back Montrell Johnson who cashes in for the touchdown as we take the first game at home 27 to 7 win for our debut as I come up with my first player of the game as a Gator throwing for 354 yards our second game at home back at the swamp we blow out our neighbors Florida Atlantic to move to 2-0 Gator fans are loving the football they are watching so far as they throw for 343 and four touchdowns third game of the season we are ranked eighth in the nation up against Mizzou in the rain and my record Corrupted. But we survived the near upset and move up to the number six team in the nation. And now we are playing my hometown school, Tennessee. Although Tennessee is one and two, they are looking to kill me as I did not commit to the balls out of high school and when I transferred. Third and goal here, coach calls another option, putting the balls in the hands of his Heisman QB. I decide to keep it to myself and I bulldoze all the way into the end zone to put us up two possessions. Defense once again holds the balls to just a field goal and puts us on the field for a two minute drill opportunity. I start out with a quick slant to my boy Xavier. Then I come back to my tight end. I don't know how to say that name. And Gator fans, get used to this. We do not settle for field goals around here as I snap a ball to my left side. To who else but Xavier Henderson for the touchdown. And we end up routing the Vols, blowing them out 34 to 6. This game meant a lot to me, man, as Coach Heifel never showed me much love despite being the number two QB coming out of Tennessee. But the team starts sleeping a little bit after the big win as I throw a terrible interception here against Kentucky. We cannot afford to drop any of these games if we want to make the playoff. Kentucky is a basketball school. This has to be a win, all right? But we are down by four, and I need a touchdown with one minute and 29 seconds left. First and 10 here. I check it down to my boy Trevor Etienne, who makes a nice move for a nice six-yard gain. Second and four. I'm looking up the seam. Oh, and it's dropped. That was a big play opportunity here. Third and four. I'm buying time for my receivers, but nobody gets open as I get hit. And now it's the biggest play of the game. Fourth and four. 57 seconds left. The number six team in the nation is on the verge of an upset. I'm 
I'm rolling out to my right. Nobody looks open, so I look deep. Ball in the air, and it's swatted out of the air by the Kentucky DB. I make a terrible read for an incomplete pass, and I turn the ball over on downs. And this is going to be game right here. But wait, Kentucky responds with a mistake of their own, and we get another chance. 46 seconds left. This is our last opportunity. First and 10. I snap the ball. I'm looking deep. Nobody's there, and I take a bad sack. Coach has to call a timeout. Second and 15. I'm looking for the corner route, but it almost gets intercepted. So it's third and 15. Coach Napier calls a levels concept, and I hit my tight end on the deep end, and he gets enough for the first down 15-yard reception. The drive stays alive here as now I'm working back to my left. Corner route outside, toe tap, sway, which stops the clock at 25 seconds, first and 10. I roll back out to my right. Nobody is there, but they are in man coverage. So I take off, and I try to get out of bounds. The clock stops at 18 seconds, but then it starts running. Coach Napier didn't call time out. He thought I was out of bounds, too. So I start clapping my hands. I'm rushing the snap. Four verts. I'm looking to give a receiver a chance. But the DB makes a great play on the ball and intercepts it. And we drop a game against 1-3 Kentucky to move us all the way down to number 17 in the nation. We also move down the Heisman ranks as Henderson and Rodgers move up. And the games don't get any easier as we head to Death Valley to play in one of the best college football atmospheres you will find at LSU. Second play of the game. I fake it to my running back and I'm off. I make the perfect read once again for a 58-yard rush. And I finish off the drive with another read option touchdown. I'm loving the system that Billy Napier has constructed for me as I am rushing a lot more than I was at Stanford, but it is 21-21 heading into the fourth. LSU starts the fourth with an immediate touchdown. We are once again in a fourth quarter crunch time situation. But I start out the fourth with a moon ball to Henderson, who breaks the Florida school record for most career receiving yards in a Gators uniform. This might be the most talented receiver I've ever played with in my life. But we end off with an instant response to Burke to tie the game right back up. Defense gets to stop to force a punt and we are in position to take a lead. Third down. LSU is hyping the crowd up. I block out the noise and I find my go-to guy Henderson for a first. Second and five. Coach calls another speed option. I make the right read once again. I fake the pitch and I run for a big game to put us in prime position to win the game. Second and goal. 48 seconds left. I'm going through all my progression and I find Burr who sits in the end zone and catches the game winning touchdown as we respond from the bad loss with a huge win against LSU after blowing out Old Dominion 55 to 21 scoring seven touchdowns we enter week 10 up against number two Georgia the highest ranked team I have ever played in my career who are led by a Heisman candidate Brock Bowers and have the best corner in the nation in Kali Ringo we have to win this game to make a statement to the committee as to why I deserve to be in the college football playoff. My first career neutral field game in Jacksonville. Vandergriff starts out with the ball and he immediately throws an interception. What a start for the Gators right here as we get the ball off a turnover. And I make them pay for their mistake with a hitch route to my boy Henderson to put up six on the ball. However, Brock Vandergriff strings together a brilliant drive and he ends it off rushing for a touchdown to knock the game right back up. The Bulldogs then force a three and out and Vandergriff is back with a strike deep down the right side to put the Bulldogs in the lead. Second and three here. Two minutes left. I'm rolling out to my right. The Bulldogs do not spot. I cut back in. Four extra yardage. 21 yard gain. And we respond right back with a touchdown in the corner of the end zone. Two Reynolds with a sweet footwork which is then followed up with a big stop by our defense. They give me the ball with 30 seconds left in the second quarter. Second and four. I'm rolling back out to my right. I'm looking deep. The safety makes a huge mistake as he thinks I'm going to my tight end. And Henderson is wide open for the touchdown. Chop, chop, chop. We then double dip out of half with a field goal to go up by 10. And our defense was acting different this game. Boom! Laying out the hammer to force a punt. And you know I had to reciprocate the energy. Georgia sends a blitz. But I find a way to get the ball to who else? Henderson who spins off Ringo like he's nothing. He's having a game as well with two touchdowns on the day. And we drive all the way down to third and three. A touchdown right here makes it three possession. I roll out. I don't see anyone open down the field. I break away from that fatty and I rush in for the touchdown. And we are up three possessions against the number two team team in the nation. We have to be putting the voters on notice right now. Number 16 is not a fair ranking for this team as when we are at our best, we are easily one of the best teams in the nation as Vandegrift throws another pick, which caps the game off 31 to 14. We blow out the Bulldogs for our biggest game as a Gator in our first ever neutral field game. And as we torch the best secondary in college football, we are now up to number two on the Heisman race. But somehow, someway, we are only number 12 in the nation. The committee still have Georgia ranked over us. This made absolutely no sense to me as there were plenty of one-loss teams ahead of us and I felt like that was one of the best wins in college
college football this year. But we still have four games remaining to get into the playoff spot as we are back in the swamp to host 6-3 and three Vandy. First and 10 deep in Vanderbilt zone. Read option. The linebacker gets full. I'm taking it off. <laughs> I destroy the Vanderbilt defenders there. 4-6 to open up the scoring. And this game got away from Vanderbilt fast. As we could not stop scoring and I could not stop running. 30 yard touchdown run there and to cap off the game. We throw a deep ball to my boy Reynolds scoring 49 points once again trying to put the committee on notice. But we only move up one spot to number 11 and our chances are getting slim. Three games left as our last ranked opponent on the schedule is number 19 South Carolina. Away in the rain there is an increase in sense of urgency as I came to Florida to win a national championship and a national championship only. I felt like the only way we were gonna win this game is if we absolutely blew them out of the water. So we came out firing in the first quarter throwing 225 yards and two touchdowns and we did not lay our foot off the gas as I hit this 51 yard deep shot to Henderson who breaks another school record for single season receiving yards. This guy is insane. And then we end the drive off with six to our slot receiver up the middle of the field. Now it is late in the third. And oh my god, that is not what I think it is. My eyes must be getting full. Do not tell me that South Carolina put a white DB on Xavier Henderson. No! I had to double check. I, I squinted my little Asian eyes just to make sure what I was seeing was true. And it absolutely was. So I immediately hot route to a stream. And look at that release, man. There was no chance. I zip it immediately. Did not need to make a read. Touchdown Gators as we blow out the game cost. 49 to 7 in this SEC matchup. But we do not move at all. Matter of fact, nobody moved as every team in the top 10 won. So now there's only two games left in our schedule to try and make a difference. First game in it's all Miss. This time, I forgot to hit record. But after winning 41 to 13, we moved down in the rankings. We moved down. Miami, Ohio moved up from 13 to 7. How is that possible? We blew out Georgia. They're ahead of us. We beat Ole Miss by 28 points. And we moved down two spots. Let me repeat that. We, we won by 28 and moved down two spots. I hate to pull the race card, but this committee has to be racist. I'm the leading Heisman candidate with a 10 and one team in the SEC. And I am not in the top 10. I'm 13. It just makes no sense at all. They have three Pac-12 teams in the top four, which I all dominated last year as well. This committee is an absolute joke, man, as we enter our final game of the season against our biggest rivals, Florida State. I come out and ball regardless because I know this game means a lot to Gator fans, but I just feel that no matter what I do, I can't make it into the playoff with this committee that is put in place. We win our final regular season game. I go for five 14 yards and four touchdowns. We are ranked in the top 10, but I've lost all hope at this point. There's a two-loss team ahead of us. Miami, Ohio, and Ball State ahead of us, all because we lost a nail-biter to Kentucky. It really felt like I came to the SEC all for nothing. At this point, I started thinking about declaring to the NFL because I just felt like there was nothing I could do to get into the top four of a college football playoff no matter how well I played. We have a chance to become SEC champions here against Texas a and I'm taking my anger out on this A&M defense as I break out, run through a tackle, and another one. Got one man ahead, skiddly diddly by Heisman, moment right there ladies and gentlemen touchdown Gators halfway through the third quarter we are down by six and I am not looking to lose this game as I make a ridiculous crossbody throw to Xavier Henderson who breaks another school record for most career receptions as a Gator this guy is nuts and we end the drive on with a screen pass to my boy Trevor Etienne to put us up by one but a and instantly responds with a field goal and now we have to run the two minute drill to win the SEC championship there is no way as a Chinese man I am going home without a trophy as on first and ten I leak out to my left and I cut back into the right for a big game to start the drive out. Then I start making pro reads, taking what the defense gives me. Three straight checkdowns to move the stick. And then I find my boy Burke up the right side who makes a nice grab. I put us on first and goal to ice the game. I'm rolling out to my left and I find my fullback for the game winning walk off touchdown right there as the Florida Gators are your new SEC champions. 31 to 25 against Texas A&M as I go for 215 in the air and 219 on the ground to win MVP. 
MVP. And we have more hardware on the way as I went back to back Heisman. Barely edging out Travion Henderson for the trophy. Absolutely insane how I have not made the college football playoffs. I am the best QB in the nation for two years in a row. I also take home the Maxwell, Walter Camp, and the O'Brien bringing four trophies home. And we finish as the seventh best team in the nation. What a joke. I set out the Sugar Bowl as I truly believe I am leaving for the NFL. As the college football committee does not want to see a Chinese QB in the playoffs, I don't want to get injured going into the draft process. But my mother finally called me and we talked for the first time in eight months. She says, son, why you no play in the Sugar Bowl? How dare you not play? You had a chance to win another trophy and you don't play? If you don't bring home the national championship, I am disowning you. So now I have a decision to make. Do I try to complete my dreams of winning a college football championship? Or do I declare for the draft to the NFL?